Aloha and welcome to Sunrise Yoga in Hawaii. It's so great to be here with you. I'm Will Donnelly with Will's Practical Yoga and uh, today uh, is uh, Thursday, May, what is the date? May 21st, 2020. And this is possibly the last of our free classes, these, uh, this series of Sunrise classes, but I might be able to fit one more in next week, so stay tuned. We're just gonna give it a few moments to make sure everything is all set up. Uh, uh, so. Uh, just tuning in um, this is going to be about a 50 minute yoga class uh, a very accessible class for most people so if you're newish to yoga I think you'll really enjoy it and it's also particularly good for people who are on a spiritual path or a journey because there's lots of healing and lots of upliftment that happens throughout class so grab a yoga mat or a towel uh, pull up next to your TV or computer and we'll be starting in about a minute all right And while we're waiting to start, I want you to just kind of take in all the sounds that you hear through your computer or your uh, whatever device you're um, using. Just listen to these birds. There's a plane flying overhead. Just behind me, as uh, to my right, is the sacred mountain of Haleakala over on the island of Maui. Uh, we're on the small island of the Nike. And so every morning I've had the great uh, grace to be able to teach yoga on this land uh, with this incredible view. Uh, so we've got Haleakala, and then a smaller island uh, out here is Ko Kaho'olawe, a non-tourist island. Nobody lives on the island. There's no water on the island, so it's one of the uh, uh, many thousands of islands uh, in the Hawaiian island chain. Uh, but only about five or six of them are really utilized for living uh, on. So let's uh, take a look and make sure that we are ready to start, and we will start and get going. All right. Welcome everybody. Kathy, it's so great to have you back. Laura Duncan, uh, Lori White, so nice to have you here. If, as you join in, uh, this is the live version of uh, class. So as you join in, if you can sign in and just say hello, tell me what city you're from, if I've had you in class before or if you're new. And um, for those of you uh, just getting here, uh, my name is Will Donnelly and this is Will's Practical Yoga with Sunrise Yoga in Hawaii. This is Thursday, May uh, 21st, 2020. And this is the fifth in a series of free early morning yoga classes, a gift from me to the world in the crisis of COVID-19, just to help us get us through this hump of uh, challenge. So if you're just joining in, this is gonna be about a 50 minute class, uh, a very uplifting class. Uh, we're starting uh, right about now. Uh, so if you can grab your uh, mat, or if you can't do yoga now, if you're at the office or something else is taking your time, uh, bookmark this page, Will's Practical Yoga page on Facebook. And uh, this video will be available for quite some time. I'll probably leave it up indefinitely. Uh, also, if you can, if you like free yoga and like inspirational yoga, go to uh, YouTube and subscribe to my channel, uh, Will's Practical Yoga on YouTube. Uh, I've got all sorts of inspiring content starting there. It's a new channel for me, but uh, I'd love to have you subscribe. So let's get started. Um, coming down into easy sitting pose. And just getting nice and comfortable. And as you're sitting wherever you are in the world, so whether you're here in Hawaii or you are on the mainland, on the east or west coast, I want you to take a few moments to just settle in and listen to the sounds around us. The Hawaiian nature uh, and land is so powerful and so sacred, it really does heal us. I think that's why we come back time and time again. So just take some time to really imagine that you're sitting here with me on this soft green grass and looking out over this incredible beauty, this uh, land that is so profoundly powerful, uh, and just kind of take it all in, let it feed your soul. All right. And uh, my computer's down this week a bit. My screen is down, so I'm having some uh, good uh, mercury retrograde kind of uh, computer stuff, but all is well. And uh, so I'm kind of going blind. I know how to time the class without looking at a clock, but uh, I'm just, I'm kind of winging it today. Uh, so let's get started. So as you come into a comfortable, easy sitting pose, uh, just get nice and comfortable. Take your hands and just rest your arms on your knees or in your lap, whatever feels most comfortable. Close down your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths through the nose down into the lower abdomen. <clears throat> and as you inhale, let the belly expand like a water balloon and the lungs expand, the diaphragm lowers down and you can really fill those lungs. 
And then on the exhale, gently pressing back with the navel center, really exhaling all the way out. Just taking a couple of breaths to help you center into this moment as we begin our journey together, this sacred journey of yoga. There is no more sacred journey than the journey when we're really truly healing ourselves and doing the work to allow for more joy in our hearts and on this planet. And so as you're sitting with your eyes closed and breathing comfortably, I want you to begin to imagine that there's an invisible string at the very top of your head pulling upward, lengthening the spine up toward the sky, readjusting the skeletal body. And as you do that, soften all the muscles of your body. So the shoulders relax down and the arms hang heavily. The face softens, the jaw releases. Everything just settles down into this moment. Your focus is on your breath, inhaling and exhaling. Imagining the sweet fragrance of fragrant flowers, beautiful blooms, birds flying everywhere, nature, fresh air. Just take it all in this morning. As we take this time to consciously turn our attention now from being externally focused in the world to now being internally focused for our practice. So first and foremost, as we sit down to practice yoga, just noticing what is both on the external and internal level. So first notice the world around you, wherever you are in the world. Just take note of your location. Feel the earth underneath you, whether you're indoors on a hardwood floor or carpeting or a yoga mat, or outdoors on a, a patio or a porch or a lawn. Feel the air on your skin if you can and see if you can notice its temperature. Become aware of all the sounds around you in your home or wherever you are. Maybe a little clicking or settling of the building, clock ticking, whatever it is that you hear. Maybe silencing your phone if you haven't. And notice the light through your eyelids as the sun makes its way across the sky. Notice the light in wherever, whatever room you're in, if the light is coming through the window or if you're outdoors. And then take this mindfulness inward and simply notice your breathing. Really feel the inhales and feel the exhales. And scan your body for what it is that you have brought to the yoga with you today, both on the physical level with your bones and your muscles, and also on the energetic level with your mind and your emotions. And in this simple space of sitting with a tall spine and breathing mindfully and simply noticing what is, we'll set our intention for our class today. Always a good idea in yoga to set your intention because we're working both the physical and the energetic bodies. So simply asking yourself, what is it that drew you to the yoga today? What is it that you most need from this practice today? What is it that your heart and mind and body are yearning for through this practice? And as you ask yourself this important question, just simply noticing and listening for the answer, the intuitive answer, what comes up for you. Maybe you've come more for a physical workout, just straight up a physical workout sweat and get in shape. And maybe you've come more for a spiritual and energetic lift and adjustment so that you can make it through this COVID-19 experience without completely pulling out all your hair, right? And so what I want you to do is zero in as to whether you've come more for the physical workout or more for the spiritual and energetic lift, and then begin to see yourself in the future in full receipt of the gift of the work that you're about to do. So you'll see yourself later today feeling really either physically really good, your bones and muscles and body feel great and fit, or if you've come for an energetic and spiritual lift, I want you to feel that, where your body feels fantastic, but also your mind feels amazing. You feel filled with a sense of creative possibility. Anything good is possible. We're gonna see if we can hold this image of ourselves in the future and try to stay emotionally connected to this image as best we can, as if it were happening right now. This is called feeling the future or planting seeds for the future, energetic seeds. So let's give that a try. We'll hold this image of ourselves in the future and try to stay emotionally connected to it as best we can as if it were happening right now as we breathe for the next couple of breaths.
Good. Now, if you had an image in your mind's eye and any emotional connection to that image, I want you to just let it all go and come back to simply following your breath. Just really feeling the inhales and really feeling the exhales. Beautiful. And let's bring our hands together and rub. So generating some good heat and friction in the hands. <clears throat> it is said that what we do with our hands, we do from our hearts. So when we rub our hands like this, we're doing many things. One of them is to generate energy at our heart center, the heart chakra, just an awareness of our heart, our heart, our compassion itself, but also balancing the left and right hemispheres of the brain through these meridians on our hands. So really rub the fingertips, the pinkies, the thumbs, just waking everything up, creating a sense of balance to start your day or continue your day if you're in the noontime on the East Coast. And let's pull our thumbs into the sternum, take a nice deep inhale through the nose. And exhale. Another deep and powerful inhale through the nose. And exhale. Good, now just breathing naturally. So we're gonna take this time to tune into our higher consciousness and consciously call our wisdom forward for this class, but certainly for well beyond this class. And we'll do this by borrowing from the ancient Sanskrit tradition of using sound as a form of therapy to help us realize the power of the present moment. And the sound that we'll use this morning is the simple sound of Om, said by the yogis to be the sound of the a constant hum of the universe itself. We'll use the sound of Om to tune into this sound of the universe and find our space and spot in all of it. So we'll do this one time. Let's take a nice deep inhale for a long Om. <clears throat> um. And take a deep inhale and really fill your lungs. Sip in as much air as you can into the lungs, then squeeze up at the root lock or the pelvic floor muscles. Bring your chin down, let this powerful energy rise up, and consciously call your wisdom forward. And exhale. Keeping your eyes closed, let your hands come down into your lap. And before you open your eyes, just spend a moment noticing. Notice whether you've been able to make any shift in your nervous system by using your breath, the sound of your own voice, and the intention of your mind and heart. And then as you're ready, slowly opening your eyes. All right, welcome to class, everybody. Now, this has been interesting as I've done this, completely winging this idea of doing live feeds and using my uh, tech, not my my tablets and whatever, my computer to to make all this happen. Uh, we usually have a smaller group doing it live actively, and then it goes into the hundreds, uh, 500 people or so who watch it afterwards. So I want to welcome everybody. If you're just tuning in, uh, my name is Will Donnelly. I've been a teacher for really 30 years. I started teaching meditation in the 90s uh, and started teaching yoga around 2000. Um, it's an incredibly profound practice. Uh, we're going to do a 50-minute class today, uh, and so you're more than welcome to do this class. I would just ask that you sign in, tell me where you're from, and also if you enjoy class, please share it with friends. I think that right now is the time for us to do this work, and so if you know others who might enjoy it, share it on your Facebook page or wherever you share it. Send it to a friend who might really uh, enjoy this free class in Hawaii. And also, if you enjoy free yoga, uh, I've just started a, a channel uh, at YouTube. So if you can go to YouTube and look for Will's Practical Yoga and subscribe and like the pages and like the uh, free yoga, it's, uh, it would be great to have you part of the Will's Practical Yoga family. So let's get started physically. Uh, usually in yoga, if you've got a really good teacher, they often start class with a little inspiration. I'm going to keep it fairly simple today, uh, but the idea is this. There's a great quote from a writer named uh, Agmandina. And he says, I will love the light, for it shows me the way. And yet, I will endure the darkness, because it shows me the stars. Now, this is an important metaphor for us to sort of, sort of 
hang out with and absorb right now as we're in a very dark period. There's no denying it's a very challenging period. There's a lot of us on this planet. It's getting complicated and, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways this could play out. Uh, but this quote really helps us because when I've learned over my life, I've had many challenges and yoga has been the one thing that has helped me drive through and steer beyond just suffering. Uh, and so what I've learned in all these dark periods of my life where I go in and out of challenges, if I've lost somebody I love or somebody I know has lost somebody they love or lost a job or is in a very difficult situation, within those elements, uh, as certainly right now with COVID-19, if you look around and you're paying attention and letting the light seep in, you can see all sorts of great acts of kindness and generosity of the human heart. And I'm really uh, tuned into that right now because there's a lot of us who've been doing doing our work for decades to bring a better ex experience for humans on this planet Earth while we're here. We basically have been given the Garden of Eden with all its dangers and all its beauty and it's really up to us to make it either work or not work. And unfortunately, it's easy to fall into being confused or making this worth world uh, a place of hell rather than a place of heaven. And so let's look around today and try to find all the kindnesses and all the ways that humans are interacting and helping one another to get through this powerful crisis that's really just teaching us uh, many things that probably won't be understood for many years. So with that, we're going to take this idea of really uh, allowing, enduring the darkness, because within the darkness, we're going to see elements of light that we could never see in the brightness of the full sun, uh, in the brightness of a super happy life. Sometimes we, in a, in a life that's too busy, uh, we can miss a lot. And so slowing down right now allows us to pick up the kindness, that maybe the hug of a child or or, uh, the artistry of a friend, something like that. Just look for the good. So let's get physical now. Now that we've engaged the brain and done our brain yoga, let's add the physical. Uh, and remembering that yoga is a mindfulness practice designed to bring us to our personal spiritual power every day we sit down to try to access it. So it's not a fitness program, even though we use fitness to get us and uh, to where we want to go with it. Uh, but ultimately it's about listening and, fi and finding a sense of absolute joy and bliss, just being in your body. And for some of us, we say, oh, that's crazy because my body hurts a lot or whatever. But if we really tend to our body, and I'll speak to the younger kids, if you start a discipline very young, uh, I've been practicing for almost 30 years and I've never been so grateful for my practice as I am now. I am as fit as I've ever been in my life. My body has more ecstatic energy moving through it than ever before. And if I could share this with people with like a moment of Shaktipat where you felt it, you'd be like, I'm going to do my practice every day, just a little. I'm just going to enjoy it as I do it. So the goal is to really savor the body and the mind as you move through it. And as you hit the, the bumps along the way where you're not happy or there's a depression, just move through it with a sense of respect as this is all teaching us something. We may not know what it is for the long haul, but it's teaching us something. And if we're mindful, we'll gain more uh, wisdom from it than if we're not paying attention to it at all. We'll stay stuck if we're being mindless. So let's add physical to this. Uh, take the arms out to the sides and up, inhaling, reaching up toward the sky, exhale, sweep down and clear out. Let's do two more of those. Inhale, reach up toward the sky, nice big breath up, exhale, sweep down and clear out. And one more time, powerfully lifting energy up, big breath up, exhale, sweep down and clear out. Take the hands in front, interlace the fingers, press the palms out. Drop the shoulders down, get a nice tall neck and shoulder stretch. This should feel really good right about here. And then inhale the arms up. Exhale, back down to parallel. And let's do one more time. Nice big breath up. Inhale. Exhale, down to parallel. We'll take the hands behind the back and interlace your fingers. Roll, keep the elbows bent. Roll your shoulders up, back and down. Then straighten the arms as much as you can into yoga mudra. Nice tall spine, soften the ribcage and chin is down. Open the heart and just breathe. Breathe and just begin to pay attention how, to how these postures are impacting you. That is our job as yogis, to just pay attention. Just notice the impulses that are really motivating us and ultimately trying to cultivate a sense of motivation toward joy and ecstasy more than our motivation towards fear or whatever it is we get into. Let's take the arms out and up. Nice big breath up. 
exhale the arms out to the sides. We're going to do eagle arms. So from here, we're going to crisscross the arms with the right arm underneath, the left arm on top. Uh, take your right hand up first, and then the left arm either goes knuckle to knuckle, or if you can wrap it around, uh, go palm to palm or fingers to palm. Then we're going to drop the shoulders down and begin to lift the elbows up, but moving very mindfully. You never want to strain the shoulders, so if you have any shoulder issues, please be doubly delicate and mindful. And once you're here, close down your eyes and take a, a breath or two into the torso. And notice how the breath works with the body in this posture. <clears throat> Good. Taking the arms out. Nice big inhale up. Exhale, switch sides. This time the left arm is on the bottom, right arm on top. Left arm comes straight up. Right arm either goes knuckle to knuckle or wraps around. Drop your shoulders down. Begin to lift the elbows up to find the perfect stretch for your body. Never pay attention to your neighbors and try to do what they're doing. Always know what the posture is and try to find the best expression that you can give it in any moment. And this way we find we don't injure ourselves and we tend to fall in love with the practice rather than feel it some sort of competition. All right, good. One more breath here. Good. And then take the arms out and up. Nice big breath up. Exhale, sweep the arms down. We're going to take our hands behind our back and come into a mild back bend. So you'll have your hands land underneath your shoulders. Lift your hips up, lift your heart up, and let the head fall back as you're comfortable doing so. Once you're in this back bend, I want you to squeeze the root locker, the pelvic floor muscles, and send vitality up toward the heart as you open your heart and chest toward the sky and breathe. Good, and then coming down to seated. All right, from here, uh, as this delicious warm sun is warming us up, uh, we're going to do a couple of forward folds. So if you have any back issues, please be doubly mindful and only go as far as is safe for your body. The first thing we're gonna do is just take our hands over to our left uh, uh, leg. You'll have, you're gonna turn your torso and we're gonna bow forward into a forward fold. So square your torso to this left thigh and then just walk your hands out in front of you. You'll notice if you stretch the right hand longer, you'll get a nice stretch along the right side of the body. Breathe down into the lower abdomen and notice how the breath helps with the stretch. And then walking back up, we're gonna go over to the opposite side. So your opposite leg, turn the torso, square the torso to that leg, and let's walk forward. Now reaching the left fingertips long, breathing down into the abdomen. Good. And then coming back up. And from here, we're just going to come into a forward fold. Lead with the navel center. We'll slide our hands forward. Just going as far forward as is safe and comfortable. When you can get no further, just relaxing the head down and breathing. And walking your hands back up. Good, let's do this. We're gonna switch the cross in our legs so our hips are happy. Uh, so you either put your other foot in front or on top of the other foot. Just switching that out, come right back down. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go over to our left leg, turn your torso, square the foot, uh, the torso to the uh, thigh, and then we're gonna walk our hands forward, reach those right, right fingertips long. Breathe and find the perfect stretch for you this day. And coming back up, we'll go over to the opposite thigh, turn your torso to square, and then bow forward. Good, coming back up in our final forward fold, leading forward, uh, leading with the navel center, just sliding your hands forward and bowing forward. Keeping the breath deep and steady. Good, walking your hands back up. Nice job, you guys. Let's take our legs out in front of us. We've been seated for a while, so shake them out. Just kind of get the energy moving. I'm gonna turn around to face the sun. The sunrise has just come up. It's way up over Haleakala. All right, great. Coming down onto your back, let's bring our knees into our chest. Wrap your arms around your shins. Tuck your nose to your knees. Engage your core muscles, and we're gonna start rocking gently side to side. A little acupressure for the kidneys. This is always good each and every day. It just gets energy moving, which is the key to wellness. Come back to center. Let's hold on to the right knee with both hands. Send your left leg down. Let the head come down to the earth. Pull the right knee into the chest. Take a deep breath down to the lower abdomen. On the exhale, let's start moving this knee from side to side. 
just beginning to open up the hip flexors on our, the right side of our body. And as we begin the physical portion of class, the asana or postures, just bringing your mind down into your hips and into your body. How are you doing today? How's your body today? Your mind. What did you do yesterday? How's it all playing out today? The goal is that we assess how we're doing each and every day. Trying to be as honest as possible about that. Now let's let this knee roll out to the side at 90 degrees. Both arms go over the top of the head. Nice big inhale and stretch. Fire up the energy along the left side of the body. Really wake it up. And then on the exhale, the arms come down and the knee comes back to center. And let's switch sides. Left leg comes up, right leg goes down. Pull the knee in, take a deep breath. On the exhale, let's start moving this knee from side to side. Just opening up the hip flexors now on the left side. And if you're just joining me, this is Will's Practical Yoga with Morning Sunrise Yoga in Hawaii. This is Thursday, May 21st, 2020. And if you don't have time to do yoga now, please bookmark this. This is a free class offered because of COVID-19, my gift to the world. Uh, so please enjoy it as my gift to you. Just bookmark it and come back to Will's Practical Yoga page on Facebook. Or go to YouTube and look for Will's Practical Yoga and subscribe. Lots of free yoga. Let's let this knee roll out to the side at 90 degrees. Both arms go over the top of the head. Nice big inhale and stretch. Fire up the energy along the right side of the body. Just wake it up. And then on the exhale, the arms come down. The knee comes back and both knees come into the chest. We'll just rock a little bit side to side. All right, let's do our little gentle warm up. We're gonna take the legs long. We'll do cross crawl crunches. Arms go over the top of the head. The way that I teach these, you can actually do, let's do alternate arm uh, lifts. So today we'll take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, the right arm comes up and the left leg. Inhale down, exhale, switch sides. If you have any back issues, just bend your knees uh, so there's no strain on the lower back. Keep going. I'm going to come out of the posture, but I want you to keep going at a nice steady pace. Breathing powerfully. Great. We have about 20 more seconds of these cross crawl crunches, and I want to welcome the people who are arriving a little later. Uh, just pull up a yoga mat and do some yoga or you can bookmark this page and save it for later. Leave a note, let me know you were here. Uh, say hi, tell me which city you're from or if I, if I don't know you, certainly. Let's do it. just a couple more. And from here we're going to lift both arms up and both legs up. Keep your hips planted on the ground, flex the feet, core is nice and strong. One more breath here and then bending the knees, let the legs come down, arms go over the top of the head. Just let it all go. Take a couple of nice deep breaths here and just notice. Notice the impact you're starting to have on your body, the sacred process of consciously turning the energy from sort of a heavy darkness to a light uh, sense of energy and movement. That is really what yoga is all about. Good, let's bring the knees into the chest. We'll rock a little bit. We'll go over to your right side, bring yourself up and around onto all fours in tabletop pose. Now from here, we're gonna go right into some leg extension cat cows. So with your hands directly underneath your shoulders, knees directly underneath your hips, we're gonna send the left leg back. Inhale your head and leg up, nice big breath up. Exhale, nose to knees and crunch it out. So it's inhale, exhale. Keep going at a nice steady pace. So as the leg goes back, your head lifts up. You take a nice big inhale. As the knee comes in, the chin comes down, use your abdominals to really fire out the breath. Remembering that about 80% of the toxins of our body leave through the exhale. So let's make use of that this morning so we feel really good today. Let's do two and one. Good, let the knee come down. Good job, you guys. From here, we'll just take a deep inhale. On the exhale, sit back on your heels, walk your fingertips out in front of you, stretch the upper torso as you breathe down into the lower torso.
And let's come back up onto all fours and we'll do the other side. So sending your left leg back, inhale your head and leg up, big breath. Exhale, nose to knees and crunch it out. Nice steady pace, keep going. Just a few more rounds, powerful breath. If there was a pigtail at the top of your head, it would probably be flying through the air. Just get a nice sense of elongation in the neck. It should feel really good to do this exercise. This is one of the best warm-up exercises I've ever utilized. I've been doing it for over 20 years. Uh, so consider adding it to your workout routine at the gym, home workouts, yoga, before you swim, bike ride. It's just great. I do it before I go out the door some days when I'm feeling really tight. This just opens up the energy and makes you feel so much better. And let's do three more. And two more, one more, good. And let the knee come down. This time we're gonna sit back on our heels, separate out your knees to the width of the yoga mat, <clears throat> lead with the navel center, we'll come deeper into our forward fold, reaching the fingertips long, dropping the navel center and heart down to the earth and breathing down into the hip. Good, and let's come back up onto all fours, curl the toes under, and come on up into down dog. So our first one of the day, so just finding your down dog, relax your shoulders, shake out your head, just kind of whatever you, the heaviness of life, just see it fall away into Mother Earth. Mother Earth always knows how to turn that stuff around. So we just kind of like unburden ourselves <clears throat> for our yoga class so we can feel free and light in this moment. We're gonna do a little bit of a warm up here before we go into our variations of Surya Namaskar A. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that we're gonna do is just take a nice deep inhale here in down dog. On the exhale, drop your knees to the earth, sit back on your heels, bring your forehead down to the ground, exhale and bow. Inhale, rising up. We're gonna come into a mild back bend. You've got two options. The full back bend with your hands behind you, lift your hips and heart open the energy of the heart. If that's too intense for you, just come up to your knees, hands to the lower back, lift from the core, open the energy of the heart. Exhale, diving through the air, landing gently in push up, lower down chaturanga, rise up into cobra, and then come on up into down dog. Let's do two more of these as sort of a simple uh, warm up. Take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, knees to the earth, sit back and bow. Inhale, rising up into the back bend of your choice, either the full or on your knees. Open the energy of the heart, big breath. Exhale, diving forward, landing gently and push up. Lower down, chaturanga. Rise up into cobra, pull up and out of the hips, soften the buttocks, drop the shoulders down, and then come on up into down dog. Take a breath, kind of walk it out. And we'll do one more of those. Nice big inhale and the exhale, knees to the earth, sit back and bow. Inhale, rising up into the back bend of your choice. Big breath. Exhale, diving forward, landing gently and push up. Lower down, chaturanga. Rise up into cobra. And then come on up into down dog. Good, just shake out the head. Just kind of shake and shimmy off whatever's needing to be shaken off. Bend the knees a little bit. Let's walk our hands backwards to the back of the mat so we're at forward fold. Take your hands right to your knees, walking your hands up your legs to standing. Once standing, take the arms out to the sides and up. Inhale, reach up toward the sky. Exhale, bring some of that beautiful sky energy down to your heart. Connect it to your energetic body. Excellent. Take a breath. Very nice. Welcome to standing, you guys. It's always a good sign when we make it to the standing portion of class. All right, great. Uh, so let's do this. We're going to begin our variations of Surya Namaskar A. Uh, so just coming to the very front of your mat, I'll just start from right here. Just find your Tadasana. Now if you uh, are a, a, a practicing yogi, uh, this is a fairly straightforward class, but if you like to get a little bit more in depth, I, I'm now leading a Zoom class. So if you go to uh, any of my pages or my willspracticalyoga.com uh, website, you can uh, find out more information about the Zoom class. So it's a very deep and rich and powerful class. So if you're into transformation and strengthening the body, uh, you should check me out uh, and come to a Zoom class. I'd love to have you. 
Uh, we talk about many things in class like the three platforms. I won't go in depth today, but the feet, the hips, and the shoulders are a key area and there's all sorts of dynamics there. But just make sure your feet are solid on the ground, make sure you're not rolling your hips forward, and make sure the shoulders are down, not scrunched up, right? So let us begin variations of Surya Namaskar A. So finding your Tadasana, your standing pose, your mountain pose, just feel your earth, your feet solid on the earth. Good. All right, let's bring our hands together at the center of the heart and let us begin this sacred journey. Take a nice big inhale, open your heart for your practice. Big breath. Exhale, hands to the base of the uh, spine, shoulder blades together. Inhale, reach the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, bring some of that beautiful sky energy and connect it to your heart. Take your hands down to the sides, out and up. Nice big inhale up. Exhale into forward fold Uttanasana. Now you can have your hands to your knees, shins, or earth. Inhale, halfway up, flat back, long spine, fill the lungs. Exhale, step or jump back into plank. We're gonna do six push-ups, so if you wanna come to your knees, please feel welcome to. Take a nice deep inhale, and on the exhale, down for one. Up, two, up, three, up, four, five, six. Good, slowly lower down, rise up into cobra. Pull up and out of the hips, soften the buttocks, drop the shoulders down. Chin is down, head is lifted. Good, feel that back bend, curl the toes under, come on up into down dog. All right, we are gonna start today with awkward dog. That's a really great uh, posture that I don't see in many classes, um, so it's, I'm excited to share it with you. So to do it, we're just gonna come down to our knees. We'll bring ourselves up to uh, standing on our knees. You're gonna take your left leg out to the side in alignment with your knee. The first thing we'll do is just inhale up, nice big breath up. Exhale, bow over to that left side. So gently touching the leg with that left hand, reach the right fingertips long and open the heart toward the sky. Breathe. Good, inhale straight up, nice big breath up. Exhale, bring your hands down to the earth. Now you're gonna walk your hands forward a bit as if you're coming into down dog. This is awkward dog, so we'll keep the legs right where they are, curl that back foot under, and rise up into awkward dog. Now you'll notice this feels very different, and it's a really great hip stretch. So just find whatever stretch feels good in it. <clears throat> and as you get into it, just breathe. One more breath here. And then we're gonna drop that right knee down, step back into down dog. And then from here we'll come into plank pose, bring your shoulders over your wrist. Make sure your rear isn't sticking too high, so kind of drop it down, feel like you're a plank of wood. Now we have two options here, you can stay here, just keep your core nice and strong. If you wanna come into suspension bridge, we're gonna slowly drop the hips down, change the musculature of the body, firm the leg, relax the buttocks, lift up at the core, drop the shoulders down. Head is lifted, chin is down. Should feel really good. And then come on up into down dog. Take a breath, walk it out. And let's do the other side. So we will drop our knees to the earth, walk our hands back a bit, come up to standing on our knees. Send your right leg out to the side in alignment with that front knee. Take the arms up and over the top of the head, nice big inhale. On the exhale, bowing over to the right side, side stretch. So now we're just delicately taking our hand probably to the, either the thigh or the uh, shin. Try not to push too hard on the knee. And reach the left fingertips long. Open up the energy along the left side of the body. Just so you can feel really good today. That is the key and the whole purpose of asana in yoga. The, the physical posture. Good. Inhale up. Nice big breath up. Exhale, hands come to the earth. We're gonna walk our hands forward a bit and come into awkward dog on the opposite side. So curling that left foot under, rising up into awkward dog on the opposite side. Pressing into the thumb and forefingers, not the wrist, lengthening long out through the hips and breathing. One more breath here. And then dropping the knee to the earth, stepping back into down dog. From here, we'll do one more suspension bridge. So coming first into plank. Nice long, like you're standing on your feet. And then you can stay here if you like, or drop the hips slowly down, firm the leg, relax the buttocks, lift up at the core, drop the shoulders down. Good. And coming up into down dog. 
All right, let's step our left leg forward, then our right. We're at forward fold at the front of the mat, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up. Long spine, fill the lungs, flat back. Exhale, release from the hips, drop the head, let go of what you need to let go of for today, just trust. And then let's rise up with a flat back and strong core, reaching up toward the sky. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. Good, let's go again, shall we? Are we having fun? I hope so. It's so beautiful here. I hope you can feel the warmth of the sunshine wherever you are, hopefully outdoors, but if you're indoors, just really appreciating where you are. Uh, we're so lucky to have shelter uh, when you think about it. So uh, just bringing your hands together at the center of the heart, let us begin again. Taking your hands down to the sides, out and up, nice big inhale out. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Let's go up and down three times for core strength and flexibility. So we're gonna flatten the back, engage the core, let's rise up, powerfully lifting energy up toward the sky. Exhale, releasing it all. Release your head and neck, shake it out. Let's do a second one, powerfully lifting upward, defying gravity, true anti-gravity. Exhale, bow forward, release the head and neck, and breathe. And a third time, powerfully lifting energy intentionally upward. Exhale, bow, let it all go, be in the flow. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step or jump back into plank pose. Let's do six more push-ups. Inhale, exhale, down for one. Up, two, up, three, four, five, six. And then slowly lower down, rise up into cobra or up dog on the tops of your feet if you're ready. And then come on up into down dog. All right, let's do our low lunge series. It's my favorite. I start every day with this uh, wonderful stretch and movement. Uh, so let's step our left foot forward, drop the right knee down to the ground, rise up into a low lunge, angel wing arm. So this is a back bend, so really feel the back bend. Um, dropping the hips down, lifting up at the core, and dropping your shoulders away from the ears. From here, we'll take a nice deep inhale, and on the exhale, windmill your left arm down, twisting to the left. Now, once you're in this twist, I want you to lift up at the sternum, drop your shoulders down, reach the fingertips long. Good. From here, you're going to bring your hands together in prayer pose on this left side of your body. And bring your right knee down, or your right elbow down to that right, uh, left knee, and just come into a gentle twist. And as we twist, remember, twists are about lengthening. So try to really lengthen as you gently twist to the left. If you want more intensity, you can curl that back foot under and come up into a full lunge. Twists are all about detoxification, so just really imagining letting go of all the stuff that you just don't need anymore, the toxins, old sticky emotions, whatever. And dropping that knee down if it's up, rising back up into full Anjali Asana, angel wing arms. Good. And then exhaling the hands down to the earth. Plant your right hand underneath this right shoulder, straighten out your right leg, left arm opens up out to the left side. Firm your right thigh. Press into the heel of the front foot. Just make sure your knee is on top of that heel. Lengthen through the top of the head as you open your heart, chest, and face toward the sky. Just awaken the body, this incredible, incredible gift we've been given. Nice big inhale here. On the exhale, we'll bring our hand down to the inside of this foot. We're going to come into lizard. So if you know lizard, just come on into it. To get into lizard safely, we'll move our left foot out to the edge of our yoga mat with the pinky at the edge and the heel about an inch in, so a slight angle. Uh, keep your back leg straight and strong. You've got three options if you have blocks, two if not. So either straight arms, softening the heart down and sort of maximizing the stretch in the hips, or your forearms on a block, both forearms on a block, or both forearms on the ground. So just choose one. And so from here, you want to keep this back leg fired up. So that right leg is really strong and you're lengthening out to the top of the head. This is all heat building and powerful. As you're doing that, soften your heart down toward the earth. The face is soft, the breath is steady, the mind is calm. These are the two energies that make yoga, yoga. Without one of them, it's not really yoga. It's either a kind of a brutish workout or just a meditation. So we are in moving meditation now, sacred as it is, because it heals us, brings us back to our true self. One more breath here, and then we'll drop that right knee down Use your hands under your shoulders. We'll straighten out this left leg and we're going to do a forward fold. So square your hips to this leg, lead with the navel center and bow forward.
One more breath here. And then coming out and stepping back into down dog. Good work, you guys. Very nice. Walk it out. Take a breath. And let's do the other side. We'll step the right foot forward. Drop your left knee down to the ground. Rise up into a low lunge, angel wing arm. Feel the back bend. Open the heart. Take a nice deep inhale here. On the exhale, windmill your right arm down, twisting to the right. Lift up at the sternum, drop the shoulders down, reach the fingertips long. Now from here, we'll bring our hands together in prayer pose on our right side. Bring your left elbow to that right knee and come into a gentle twist. Now this is plenty for a lot of us, so just enjoy it. If you want more intensity and heat, you're going to curl that back foot under and come up into a full lunge. One more breath here, and then gently coming out. Both arms come back up into full Anjali, big inhale. Exhale, hands down to the earth, plant your left hand underneath this left shoulder, straighten out the left leg, right arm opens up out to the right side in a twist. Whatever's touching the earth you want to activate, just fire it up. <laughs> One more breath here, nice big inhale. Exhale, bring your hand down to the inside of this foot. Let's come into lizard on the opposite side, so moving that right foot out at a slight angle and coming into the posture of your choice, either straight arms or forearms on a block or the ground. And once in the posture, just breathe and notice. Notice the impact you're having on yourself today, your body and your mind and energetic body, your emotion. One more breath here, and then stepping back into down dog. All right. Let's drop our knees to the earth, sit back on our heels, forehead comes down, take a breath. And then we're gonna rise up into a little bit of a back bend, so take your hands behind you or come up onto your knees as we've done earlier for a back bend, hands to the lower back, just to open the energy of the heart. And then sitting down, we'll dive forward, rise back up into down dog. Let's step our right foot forward, then our left. We're at forward fold at the front of the mat, Uttanasana. Inhale halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, release from the hips, drop the head. Let go of what you need to let go of for today. Trust. And then let's rise up with a flat back, strong core, reaching toward the sky. Exhale, bring some of that beautiful sky energy down to your heart. And take a breath. Ah, how are we doing? Good? I wish you guys were here with me so I could see you eye to eye, but I'm so grateful you are here. Um, let's head into our uh, gratitude moment. So just planting your feet down, we're just going to take a moment and tune into our gratitude, which is uh, uh, important. Uh, so we're going to take our left hand into our solar plexus or anywhere on your chest where you can feel your own heartbeat. And then your right hand goes on top of the left. Plant your feet down so you're solid. Close your eyes. Breathe through the nose down to the lower abdomen. And you can maybe look up to the third eye. And feel the pulse of the life force that you have been gifted with. This truly incredible treasure. It is a treasure and a gift that does not last forever. And therefore our choices along the way make a huge difference in our experiences and our outcome. So, choosing first and foremost today to cultivate a sense of deep gratitude. And gratitude not only for this beautiful moment we get to share. Here in Hawaii, uh, as you take in the sounds of the birds, imagine the scented flowers, imagine the sacred land really healing you. It's so beautiful. But also being grateful for everything. Everything that has brought you to where you stand today. All your ups and yes, all your downs. Because truly, everything is being sent as a gift from beyond to help us find our wisdom, if we will let it. So, choosing gratitude, cultivating gratitude, it literally rewires our brain, changes the synapse flow, and literally changes everything for us. Because we do not see the world the way it is. We always see the world the way we are. Beautiful. And let's take a nice deep inhale, hold the breath up. And hold, two, three, four, and exhale. Let your hands come down to the side. And just kind of shake it out. 
Very good, you guys. We'll do a brief standing series and then come down and do a little stretching before we head into our Shavasana. So uh, from the very top of your mat, I'm gonna come off the mat and just come onto the grass because it's so nice. Um, we're gonna uh, first come into our standing posture, our Tadasana, but we'll step back into Warrior Two. And to do that, you're just gonna step your right leg back as far as you can go. And just remembering, if you're newer to the practice and don't know where those feet should land, ideally, if you're new to the practice, they, if you had stripes on your mat, they would be your heels would be on the same stripe. So they should be in alignment. The left knee should always be on top of that heel uh, so that as you press into it, you don't hurt the knee. And then we'll add the arms. And also, the other thing that I note, uh, notice a lot uh, as I teach and I look in magazines, model yoga, uh, there's a tendency for people to release the hips and lean forward. It's not wrong, you won't injure yourself, but uh, if you wanna get the most out of a stretch for your hips, here's what you should do. Straighten the front leg, lift up at the frontal hip bones, reset the pelvis to the lower spine. So I engage the core, lift up at the uh, frontal hip bones, and my pelvis goes back to its natural state. I can really feel the stretch in this back hip flexor. So I'm gonna keep that lift going, go back into the full uh, posture, then add the arms. So hopefully you feel that. It's really nice. Uh, so we're going to turn the head to the backhand and stretch the neck. Turn to the front. And let's begin our flow. So turn your left palm up. Inhale into reverse warrior. Nice big breath and stretch along the left side body. Exhale, bring your elbow down to the knee. Right arm goes long side angle. Not too much pressure on that elbow. Ideally, you're doing it all with the core and the torso. I usually use it to help me lengthen. Good. And let's come back up into Reverse Warrior. Big breath, big stretch. Exhale, come down to that same posture we were just in. If you want more intensity, take your hand to the outside of this foot. Arms go straight up from the earth in Vashistasana arms. Now from here, firm that back thigh. Press into the heel of the front foot and lengthen through the top of the head to activate the posture. Should feel really good. At first, yoga really didn't feel good. <laughs> I remember those days. But now it's like a little bit of ecstasy every time I work out. It's truly incredible. So I highly encourage a, a daily program. Great. And let's inhale up. Nice big breath up. Exhale into warrior. Now you can come down to either one of those two. If you want to go deeper and take the bind, you'll take your left hand underneath that uh, left thigh. The right arm goes over the hips. Find the bind. So wherever you are, whether it's elbow on the knee or arms in Vashistasana or here in the full bind, just really enjoying the postures. Now, if you're in this full bind and want to get a little bit more out of this, you can straighten that front leg and come into bound triangle. Now, if you want to get even more intense, if you're in bound triangle, you can take your right hand to the top of this left thigh. Take your left arm out to the side, almost like you're cupping to hold some water. That's pouring out of a sacred well. Good. Now, stay here if this is plenty. If you want the full intensity, you're going to take your right arm up and then see if you can bring it over and touch fingers. Good. And then bring the arm back up. Come up into Reverse Warrior once again. Nice work, you guys. Exhale into Warrior. Straighten the front leg. Turn the foot so it's parallel to the back leg. Take your hands to your hips. Inhale, exhale, and bow forward. Wide-legged forward fold, releasing the head and neck. And rising back up. Slight bend in the knees, reach up toward the sky. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. All right, let's do the other side, shall we? Uh, so turning your right foot to the back of your mat, bringing that right knee over that right heel as much as possible. It's better to have it on this side. You won't get as much of a workout, but if you go beyond it, you, you will ultimately strain those tendons. So make sure it doesn't go beyond. Then we'll adjust the hips, add the arms. Good, now let's look to the backhand. Stretch the neck, take a breath, look to the front hand. And turn your right palm up, inhale into reverse warrior. Nice big breath and stretch. Exhale, elbow to the knee, left arm goes long side angle. <sighs> Breathe. Good. Inhale into reverse warrior, big breath. Exhale to that same posture or arms in Vashistasana. And coming back up, big breath up. 
Exhale into warrior. Now you can take either one of those two binds we were just in if you want to go a little bit more intensely. We're going to take the right uh, hand underneath that right thigh. Left arm goes over the hips. Find the bind and open your heart, face, and chest toward the sky. And of course, staying here if you'd like. If not, if you want to go a little deeper, straighten that front leg into bound triangle. Now, if you want to get a more intense workout, just stay where you are if you're comfortable, if you're happy. If you want more, take your left hand to the top of that right thigh. Take your right arm out to the side like you're cupping for some sacred water from a sacred well. Good. Stay here if this is enough. If you want the full intensity, we're going to first lift our arm up and then bring the fingertips over to touch and then come back up. Good work, you guys. Inhale up, big breath up. Exhale into warrior. Let's straighten that front leg. Turn the foot so it's parallel to the back leg. All right. Now, uh, let's do this. I'm going to come back onto my mat. Let's do this. Take your hands to the back, interlace your fingers, and come into yoga mudra. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down, straighten the arms. Inhale, exhale, and bow forward. <sighs> Wide-legged forward fold with arms in yoga mudra. Now, as you're doing this, I want you to keep your feet where they are, but try to pull the heels together to activate the hips. Just firing up your core. One of our last chances to really build this sacred heat. Then let your hands come down to the earth. All right, let's get a hip stretch in. We're gonna, just before we go into our final stretch for, uh, before Shavasana, we're gonna walk our hands over to that left foot, bend the left knee. Now the first part of this is a wide-legged squat, so both feet solid on the ground, dropping the hips down, lengthening through the top of the head. If this is enough for you, stay here. If you want more intensity, sit on your left heel, straighten out that right leg, and then bow forward to find the stretch. Wherever you are, just enjoying the sacredness of this heat that we're creating. This heat is called tapas, and it is a sacred heat because it really cleanses the body. It allows us to maintain our vitality throughout the decades and into our senior years where many people have lost their vitality, which is sad. Um, so uh, just really allowing this heat to do its work. But it also works the psychological level, so it really purifies us in terms of our psychology. Uh, so it's very helpful and clearing for the mind. One more breath here. <sighs> Feels so good, eh? All right, let's come back up to center. We'll walk our hands over to that right foot. Bend your right knee. Drop the hips down. Lengthen out through the top of the head. Stay here if this is plenty. If you want more, you'll sit on that right heel. Straighten out the left leg. And then bow forward to find the stretch. One of my favorite things about teaching here are the birds. It is like being in an aviary. And sometimes they'll swoop down right around me. It's as if they want to participate in the yoga, which I really like. Good. All right, one more breath here. And then coming back up to center. Keep a nice little bend in the knees. We'll rise up for our final salute to the sky. Reach high. Big breath up. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath. Just taking your hands to your heart and taking a moment to notice the work that you've been doing. Uh, for the last 45 minutes. Feel the heat of your body, the pulse of your heartbeat, the sacredness of the life force that you have been given, this opportunity to bring your gift forward into this world. It's never too late to remember that we were born to give a gift. That gift is all about kindness and service to others. It fulfills us and it's a beautiful thing and makes the world more of a heaven on earth rather than a hell on earth. <laughs> Always a good thing. All right, let's walk our feet together. Nice job, you guys. Very good. Let's come down onto our backs. I'm going to take a look and make sure everything's functioning because I've had so many technical stuff, but it looks like we're still going great. So great to see all you guys here. Jean and Nina and Erica and all sorts of wonderful people. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's come down onto our backs. We'll get a nice little, uh, this is the easiest and most approachable uh, backbend. If you want to do something more uh, intense like Ustrasana or Urdhvadanyarasana, if you're an advanced yogi, please do those instead. But for the, a lot of us uh, students that tune in might be beginners, so this is a great backbend that's easy to do. Uh, so we're coming into bridge pose. Now ladies, if it's the first three days of your moon cycle, no uh, inversion, so you're just going to skip this one entirely. Uh, all right, so with your knees bent, feet flat on the ground, take your hands down to the side body, palms facing down. Walk your shoulder blades together underneath your heart so the weight of this posture will fall on your shoulders, not your neck or your head. 
and then just mindfully lifting our hips up into the air. Now, the first thing is, if there's pain in your lower back, do not go any further. Lower down and just kind of hang out here. If there is no pain and you want to go deeper, you're going to interlace your hands under your hips, walk your shoulders together even more, and begin to lift up from the sternum past the nose to really lift up and out of the hips in a classic back bend. Good. Head is relaxed. Never turn your head in this kind of a posture, whether you're shoulder stand or bridge. Now, if you want to stay here, this is great. If you want just a bit more intensity, we're going to send the right leg straight up to the sky, lift up from the core, and breathe. And let that leg come down, we'll switch sides. Left leg comes up, ah, oh, feels so good. And coming down. Good, slowly rolling the spine down one vertebra at a time. And since we did a back bend, and if you're in Ustrasana or Urdhva coming out, we'll take our arms out to the sides, we'll get a nice little twist in. Take the arms out to the sides, palms facing down, knees come over the hips, bent at 90 degrees. Take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, let the knees fall over to the right side. Breathe deeply down to the lower abdomen. Maybe turn your head to the opposite direction. Just feel the stretch and just soften down. We're slowing everything down as we make our way into the most important moment in class, our Shavasana. Good. Let's bring the knees back up to starting point. Take a deep inhale. On the exhale, switch sides. Yoga is the great teacher that we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to do every single posture perfectly. Our goal is to fall in love with the process, with the actual workout, with the sweat, with the joy that we get just being alive. And the more yoga you do, the more this joy comes back online. We were born at birth wired for joy and ecstasy. And really the amount that we let in is solely up to us. And let's bring the knee back up to center. Big breath, let the feet come down to the earth. All right, we'll do one last rock gently side to side. And then from here, we'll do we'll end class with baby pose, reaching down between your legs, grabbing the big toes with the first two fingers of each hand, press into the nail of the big toe with your thumbs. It's an acupressure point for the pituitary gland, and we'll come into happy baby. Now, the key here is to make sure your hips stay planted on the ground. So if you find your hips rising up, I want you to lift up at the sternum to really plant uh, the hips to the earth. And if this is enough for you, stay here and enjoy this really yummy stretch. If you want more intensity, you can straighten your legs into full kundalini lotus, or the reclined split. Breathe. One more breath here. And if you're in kundalini lotus, bend the knees, we'll all come back into happy baby and rock one last time side to side. And now making our way into our Shavasana. So the legs go long along the mat, hands at your sides, palms facing upward. Walk your shoulder blades together underneath your heart so you can breathe. Close your eyes and let it all go. So if this were just a fitness class, if this was a yoga fitness class or a gym workout, we'd take off now. We would just leave really quickly. But because it's yoga and we actually work both the physical body and the energetic body, our mind and our emotions, we take time at the end of every class to really let it all settle in gently. So it settles into our muscles and our bones and our nervous system and heals us, but it also settles into our mind and our emotion and heals us there as well. So just as if your body were a, a bar of Ghirardelli chocolate softening in this warm Hawaiian sun. Just feel all the muscles melt down. Let Mother Earth hold you and let this be your opportunity to really heal. Birds are our music. And as we started class today, today's inspiration is a quote from the writer Agamandino. He says, I will love the light for it shows me the way, but I will endure the darkness because it shows me the stars.
remembering that in dark times there are gifts that are given throughout the darkness that are really not really visible when we're in the full light. So just really keeping a sharp eye out today for all the beauty of human kindnesses that you'll see. And my mantra during this COVID-19 experience is a quote from the mystical Sufi mystic uh, Rumi. He says, move, but don't move the way fear makes you move. Great wisdom. All right, and taking a nice deep inhale, really fill your lungs. And exhale. Good job. Let's wiggle the fingers and toes, roll your wrists and ankles, just bringing movement back in. We've had the full cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Yay. We are reborn to ourselves. Good. Bring your knees into your chest. Begin to rock gently side to side. Use your abdominals. Keep them nice and fired up. A final gentle shiatsu pressure for the kidneys and lower back. One of our final yin moments in class. And then rolling over to your right side. Just stay there for one, at least one complete breath. Use your arm as a pillow. And just really feel the sweetness of your practice. You've done great work this morning, or this afternoon, wherever you are. Whatever time you're watching this, because a lot of people watch it after the fact. And then bringing yourself up into easy sitting pose where we will close class as we opened it, using sound as a form of therapy to help us realize the power of the present moment. Divinity is found in the present moment, not the past or the future. Suffering is found in the past or the future. I've been working on that a lot lately. All right, great. <clears throat> so bringing your hands together, pull the thumbs into the sternum. Let's inhale for a long om. Now remember, uh, I, if you don't know this, the sound of om has four distinct sounds. Ah, u, m, and silence. So see if you can hear all of it. <clears throat> Let's inhale to begin. And thank you so much for your presence today. It's been such an honor to sit and share this profound and powerful yoga with you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, namaste, first and foremost. And uh, just to, uh, to kind of bookend this, this, I'm Will Donnelly from Will's Practical Yoga. And I'd, if you enjoyed today's class, I would love to uh, have you in other classes. I've got lots of free offerings as well as some Zoom classes for donation. So whatever suits you, uh, I'd love to meet you someday. Uh, so uh, if you can, go to either my Will's Practical Yoga page on Facebook and like it and follow me. I, I put all my offerings on there. Uh, but also I've started a YouTube channel where all my free classes will start unfolding. So if you could go to that and subscribe and like it, that would be really great. I'd like to get that up and running and I'd love to have you be part of the Will's Practical Yoga family. Have a beautiful day today. Remember that uh, the world is what it is, but we, how we respond to it is the only thing we really have power with. And yoga can help us really turn our minds in the right direction to make it through all the lightness and darkness of this world. Have an absolutely stunning day. It's been an honor to be with you and aloha. And don't forget to leave a note. Tell me you were in class. I'd love to hear from you and uh, I hope class was really enjoyable.